Who here has ever spent hours scrolling through Facebook or Instagram, watched an entire season of your favorite TV show in one sitting, lost a little bit too much time trying to beat that one level of that one game? I'm sure all of us answered yes to at least one of these questions, if not all of them. Modern technology is an amazing thing, but it's just so easy to get addicted to it. With the internet, highly addictive things such as pornography, video games, social media, and even drugs are much more readily available. Today I'd like to talk about the dangers of addiction, and more specifically, the release of dopamine in our, in our brains. I realize that most people here aren't licensed psychiatrists, but neither am I, so I had to do a little research. Here's what I found. The main source of addiction is a natural chemical that you might not have heard of before, dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. That means that they transmit data between the neurons, which are the nerve transmitters of the brain. Very few parts of the brain actually produce dopamine. Some of these include the substantia nigra, the ventral tegmental area, or VTA, and the hypothalamus, which are all very close together. While all three of these are very important parts of our brain, the dopamine neurons and the VTA are what cause addiction, so it's what I'm going to focus on. Whenever something, whenever something good and unexpected happens to you, the VTA releases dopamine. This is what makes you feel pleasure. This pleasure is what fuels us to seek out goals and fulfill desires. Because of this, dopamine is known as the pleasure hormone. That's why you feel so happy when someone surprises you with things like food or a surprise birthday party. This is also why there are so many people addicted to technology, social media, and video games. All of which are not just prevalent issues to today's teens, but everyone. Things like video games, social media, and binge watching cause almost immediate dopamine release and gratification but it lasts for a very short amount of time. This puts you in a loop where you seek out the pleasure you get from dopamine, which in turn rewards you, and then you get stuck searching for this pleasure. It becomes harder and harder not to check your phone, and that's why everyone feels the need to check their devices so much, including those who inevitably check their phones during my presentation. <laughs> However, you can battle any addiction, whether it, be the whether it be the supercomputer in your pocket or something more intense like drugs. I would like to focus on the various different technology addictions as they are the most prevalent today. I'm first going to cover mobile phone addictions. The simplest way to help with phone overuse is setting time limits for yourself. Just a year or so ago, I would watch several hours of YouTube a day, and it got to the point where I wouldn't come up to dinner because I had finished my homework and didn't want to get off of YouTube, which I thought was my reward for all of my hard work. My parents decided to set a time limit on YouTube for one hour. At first, I got, in, I, I got really angry that I couldn't watch for nearly as long. But I've gotten really, I've gotten used to it over time. It's helped a lot with my addiction. On iOS, it's very simple to set time limits on any app. If your iPhone is above iOS 12, you can go into settings and then screen time. From this menu, you can set limits on any app you want. A similar feature is available on recent Samsung Galaxy phones with the free Samsung Marshmallow app. If your device does not have a screen time feature, there are other alternatives, such as third-party apps or hardware like the Disney Circle. Another piece of technology that we all spend way too much time on is television. A big thing that people do nowadays that will, get addicted to, that will get them addicted to watching TV is binge watching. Binge watching is defined as watching two to six hours of the same show in one sitting. Studies done by Netflix found that 61% of users binge watch, binge watch regularly and 73% of them feel really good while doing it. This is of course because of the release of dopamine that occurs when watching TV. This has become so much of a problem that the company Nielsen found that 361,000 people watched the entire second season of Stranger Things the day it was released. To prevent people from doing things like this, Netflix has put in a reminder if you go too long without using the remote that asks if they're still watching. I know that a lot of people think it's annoying, including myself, but it's really there to help us. If you get it, it's probably time to turn off the TV and do something else. <laughs> no matter what addiction you or your loved ones might have, the real thing that you can do to prevent it is not ignore it. In today's society, there are people who have addictions that will try to hide it in fear that people will judge them for it. A lot of school districts in the U.S. have something called Red Ribbon Week, which is basically a state of a judge week. In elementary school, we would get things like red bracelets, suckers, ribbons, and many other things telling us not to smoke or do drugs. I believe that more area should adopt this to spread awareness about drugs and addictions, as it could really help a lot of kids and teens. The, the reality of it all is that addiction is not a choice. It's a disease. And like most diseases, the most simplistic way to stop addictions is to get help. This is my call out to all of you. Don't let your addiction define who you are. Do what you can, stop it, and never give up. Thank you for your time.